Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. Proverbs chapter 13. A wise son heeds his father's instruction, but a mocker does not respond to rebukes. From the fruit of their lips, people enjoy good things, but the unfaithful have an appetite for violence. Those who guard their lips preserve their lives, but those who speak rashly will come to ruin. A sluggard's appetite is never filled, but the desires of the diligent are fully satisfied. The righteous hate what is false, but the wicked make themselves a stench and bring shame on themselves. Righteousness guards the person of integrity, but wickedness overthrows the sinner. One person pretends to be rich, yet has nothing. Another pretends to be poor, yet has great wealth. A person's riches may ransom their life, but the poor cannot respond to threatening rebukes. The light of the righteous shines brightly, but the lamp of the wicked is snuffed out. Where there is strife, there is pride, but wisdom is found in those who take advice. Dishonest money dwindles away, but whoever gathers money little by little makes it grow. Hope deferred makes the heart sick but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. Whoever scorns instruction will pay for it, but whoever respects a command is rewarded. The teaching of the wise is a fountain of life, turning a person from the snares of death. Good judgment wins favor, but the way of the unfaithful leads to their destruction. All who are prudent act with knowledge, but fools expose their folly. A wicked messenger falls into trouble, but a trustworthy envoy brings healing. Whoever disregards discipline comes to poverty and shame, but whoever heeds correction is honored. A longing fulfilled is sweet to the soul but fools detest turning from evil. Walk with the wise and become wise, for a companion of fools suffers harm. Trouble pursues the sinner, but the righteous are rewarded with good things. A good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children, but a sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous. An unplowed field produces food for the poor, but injustice sweeps it away. Whoever spares the rod hates their children, but the one who loves their children is careful to discipline them. The righteous eat to their heart's content, but the stomach of the wicked goes hungry. And so, friends, we have a number of general maxims or principles. These are one-liners are contrasting wise and foolish, uh, separated by the word but in English. You're so-and-so, but you're this way if you're a foolish person. But it begins with um, a reference to those who are wise, saying essentially that they'll listen to correction, but mockers or unwise people will not. Verse 1, a wise son heeds his father's instruction, but a mocker does not respond to rebukes. And I'm sure that um, in your life experience, you've seen many arrogant people who refuse to respond to any kind of correction. But there's definitely wisdom in receiving correction, especially from a father or a spiritual father or an older counselor giving instruction. But someone who's unwise does not respond to any kind of correction. They are assuming that they're right in whatever they do, and that's a very foolish position. There's a little bit of financial advice concerning having a good work ethic in verse 4. 
A sluggard's appetite is never filled, but the desires of the diligent are fully satisfied. In other words, if if you're lazy, whatever it is that you're hoping for will never come to pass. But if you're hardworking and you pursue your goals and your dreams diligently, then these things will ultimately come to pass. Now, that's a general principle. I know that there are some very fine people who work extremely hard and never become successful. But the Proverbs are generally true. They're not experientially true in each and every case. But generally, your work ethic has a lot to do with your satisfaction and with accomplishing your goals. There are some principles of wealth, a very interesting one, too, actually, in verse 11. Dishonest money dwindles away. Let me just pause on that a second. I think you're probably aware that most criminals do not end up very wealthy people. Their ill-gotten gains are quickly spent, and their, their wealth, if there is any, is squandered on riotous, sinful living in various ways. But the proverb continues with a contrast, but whoever gathers money little by little makes it grow. In other words, if you save your money, and if you've... Um, taken the time to work diligently and gather up a little bit of savings, then you will, over time, begin to accumulate as opposed to quickly gaining wealth dishonestly and then blowing it all. There's a a powerful psychological observation in verse 12. Hope deferred makes the heart grow sick. Now, I have personally witnessed this that people who had um, tremendous hope in a good way, as time went on, they became heart sick. But the proverb doesn't end with hope deferred makes the heart sick, but it, it continues. But a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. And so once the thing that has been hoped for comes to pass, it's life giving. It is um, affirming. It is life changing. Let me just make a general statement or a counseling attempt while we're in the context of this proverb. People often get into a pattern that's negative in the course of their lives. They become heartsick, as the proverb says, and they become defeated and they diminish their efforts. They grow um, weary of trying and trying and trying. And so if you or someone you know is in that position, they've kind of abandoned hope and kind of given up, you've got to find a way to get back on a positive trend of having your hopes and dreams come to pass. And the best way to do that is to set some simple, doable, uh, measurable goal, an event, um, a test of some kind that you can accomplish and do it correctly. And that becomes a win in the scorecard of your life. It's easier to build upon wins than to change from a series of losses suddenly to a win. So go for not a huge win in terms of a life change, but go for small incremental changes initially until you begin to reestablish that pattern of winning or, or getting what it is that you're longing for, what you're desiring to accomplish. Friends, honestly, this will help you and it will help uh, your friends or family members that are struggling. If you can just get them to begin simply with doable things and then point out their victories, their small victories, and let the small victories become bigger. Continuing in verse um, 22, there's a comment concerning wealth. A good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children, but a sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous. Now, this um, leaving an inheritance for children's children, that's your grandchildren. A good person leaves an inheritance for their grandchildren, but a sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous. Essentially, it's saying what the prior proverb in verse 11 was saying, that um, essentially ill-gotten gains are quickly gone, but um, those things that are accomplished by hard work and persistence and diligence accumulate. And so um, someone with a good work ethic often will have an inheritance for their grandchildren left behind. There's some advice on child rearing. Verse 24, whoever spares the rod hates their children, but the one who loves their children is careful to discipline them. 
So whether with a rod or, or with some other type of punishment, uh, discipline is something that children need. They need boundaries. They need to grow within the context of um, loving parents who will guide them towards what's right and guide them away from what's wrong. And so, Lord, we thank you for these wise principles. We want to be wise sons and daughters. Help us, Lord, to respond to your rebuke and the correct rebuke of others. Help us, Lord, to live our lives with consistence, diligence. Help us to avoid get-rich-quick schemes, Lord. And, Lord, for those whose uh, deferred hope has made their hearts sick, I pray, Lord, that you would heal their hearts and begin to give them victories again in life. Let their longings be fulfilled. Let their dreams be fulfilled. Let their purpose in this life come to pass. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.